Hey everybody, welcome to Assemble, I'm Matt. Today we're going through universe mode, walking you through the basics of setting up your brand new universe, things you need to know, and just some helpful tips along the way. Now, one thing I'll say, you got three slots here. If you have existing universe modes, particularly one, like the one we're gonna set up, and it's all crafted, it's all perfect the way you like, the rosters, the teams, the stats, everything is the way you like, take it, and just hit copy and save it over to slot two or three. And the reason I say that is that it gives you as a backup essentially that you wanna maybe mess around with, tweak more things, or just one you kinda wanna have a fail safe in case, you know, the first one crashes on you. Now your superstar mode is going through and playing as one superstar all the way through. You cannot simulate the matches doing it this way. We can go over to classic mode, which is where we're gonna live today. Now the first thing I did is I deleted NXT. I usually just like having a Monday and Friday show, but sometimes I might actually wanna be able to just move like SmackDown around to another night. I've gotten creative before where I've just flipped Raw and SmackDown to have some more fun with it. What I am gonna do this time around is we're gonna move SmackDown over to Thursday night instead. So we're gonna make it a major show. And the easiest thing to do is that you can just go by the templates they have. So we'll add in SmackDown and this way it will be automatically added with the participants, the titles, everything. It's just, it's kind of like copying over what is there for the standard universe mode shows. So we can delete that show and this way we still have our roster set up for SmackDown uh, and then I don't have to change anything, but we will go around and we will change a lot of different stuff here and throughout this process. Pay-per-views are all sitting on Sunday because we cannot change it in here. So I wanna be able to have like a Saturday, Sunday premium live events, but it turns into a major show instead of just doing a pay-per-view being able to have that. So you still are stuck on the Sundays, which is a bummer. Now heading over to options, one of the first things I always end up doing is tweaking all of this. I turn off the automatic rivalries. I don't have teams break up. The crowd changing reaction you could leave on. Entrances, it's up to you. I might just turn them off. AI cash-ins, I make them zero. I don't want the AI to do money in the bank cash-in. I want to be able to do the cash-in, so we always leave these off. Tutorials are off and that's it. Now for your titles, because I got rid of NXT, we're gonna delete NXT, but I'm also gonna be removing most of my champions other than my world champions so I can mess around with it and change up who we're gonna have as our main title contenders and which titles we're gonna use. This is after patch 1.08, so you can see that we do have damage control in here as a team. What you have to do is, because it doesn't do this automatically, you do need to turn on the trio entrance type, make it together, and then we can change the trio's entrance to be damage control. Okay, we've changed it now to be damage control for the trio settings. Now I'm gonna delete some teams cause like RK Bro, I like to follow along with what's current product closely. So the Bella Twins, like I, I can leave some of these cause we're not gonna include them on the show. But like Dirty Dogs, we'll get rid of. Chanky and Jinder are gone. Now another thing I will do, I'll mess around with a lot of the different superstar settings too before I even get started. So for example, Roman Reigns will edit here and the main thing here is that we have his tag team as allies, but I'm gonna change up the managers here. So we're gonna swap it. So it's gonna be Paul Heyman. And that way it should trigger Paul Heyman to be Roman's manager after the latest update. It's supposed to have it so that managers come out a little bit more often. I've seen some of it glitch though, where it is showing up or where Karrion Cross is not having Scarlet. It's because they're in a rivalry. So some of it is still a little messed up. We got to play around with it. This also means that you want to make sure that you're going through and you're setting up different allies, tag teams the way you want. So because I want to keep things a little bit more current, putting Kevin Owens in there as his main ally. Edge is going to be on the roster too, but I don't want Beth coming out all the time. This is a thing that usually bothers me when I'm setting up a new universe is having to go through and I just make sure that everyone is kind of set up the way I want them to so that their respective managers are going to be there, that it's not going to be too messed up or it's just weird. This does take a while, but if you want to have a very cleaned up universe that is fairly accurate, you're going to want to spend your time in here and just going through all of the superstars to make sure that their managers 
are set up properly and keeping it current and up to date. And the next thing we look at is going to be rivalry slots. So when you are gonna set up rivalries for either of your shows or whatever shows you have set up, one thing to keep in mind is you wanna be able to trigger those action items, the action rivalry list, and you're gonna get different actions available based off of the rivalry type and more specifically the intensity it is set at. So a low intensity feud is only gonna allow you to have a certain number certain selection of the action items available if you jack up the intensity really high it will essentially unlock everything for you to be able to use for action items but we'll save on this just for a minute because we have to go in and we are going to mess around with the roster for our shows but before i get into the participants the number of matches i will have on raw is usually going to be around five because i can do four rivalries and i could do an extra match in there too so all my rivalries are going to be the focus and the match table We'll come back to in just a second, but I do like to switch this up and make things a little bit more specific. For our champions and everything that we're gonna run on the show, one thing I do like to do is typically add in a few more titles and custom titles. The one I'm using here is coming in from Prime ML, and they have Women's United States Championship and a more updated Women's Intercontinental title, whether I wanna use them or not. But I like to be able to include some custom titles to be able to break up uh, some of the divisions that I have. So this one, we got a women's intercontinental title that I like. So on Raw, what I am gonna do is, I'm gonna get rid of the women's Raw championship. And right now I am gonna put in for this slot here, we're gonna have the women's intercontinental championship on Raw. I'll switch up the divisions, but for this one to start things off is kind of our mid card title. I will give it to Carmella to run this. And then for championships, I kind of want to do just like universal title, basically. So I'm going to use the women's championship and we are going to give this uh, to Bianca Belair to hold on to the women's championship. And then that way we got like a mid card title and we've got the women's title. You could change this up too. And you could just have like the raw women's championship as your mid card. And then you could have a undisputed WWE women's championship you want to go that route or not it's just whatever you want to do for the tag titles itself i do want each brand to have tag titles so we're going to put the world titles here uh i might be doing i'm going to do the 02 to 2010 titles and i'm going to put the usos on raw and i'm fine with this i'm going to move the intercontinental title over to raw as well and i'm an attitude era kid so i like the you know attitude era intercontinental championship but i am going to put it on solo sokoa to start things off they're gonna have, and I'll change up these titles as well, but right now that's what we're gonna end up doing. Our tag team champions for the women's, we'll put it on damage control. And we're gonna remove this championship. Downloaded a big gold belt, because I want big gold belt on Raw. And we're actually gonna put the big gold belt on Randy Orton to be our champion on this show. Now I'm gonna be changing up my roster and who's on which show so what i tend to do is i go through and i will like deselect everybody just so it's easy in my brain and i could keep like my champions on my show but anybody who's not a champion i'll remove them and then i'll kind of just start over again when i'm ready to build up my roster and i will do the exact same thing for smackdown because i want to make some roster shifts different than currently what we have set up here on raw now, over on SmackDown, I'm gonna edit these championships too. So we will have the Universal Championship with Roman Reigns running SmackDown. Before I can do that though, we gotta add in our participants for our shows. So we're gonna add AJ Styles over to SmackDown. We're gonna change up some of these rosters from what they even are for current day Monday Night Raw. We'll put Bliss and Aaliyah. Austin Theory needs a changeover. We're gonna bring up Axiom. Damage Control, we're gonna bring up to SmackDown as well. Bianca is our heavyweight champion. She's cross-brand. Becky Lynch is going to come over to SmackDown with Seth Rollins. Bobby Lash, it's just a lot of like swapping the Raw guys and SmackDown guys. Ron Breaker, we're going to call up and bring him over to SmackDown. Chad Gable, we're going to break up the tag team and we're going to put them, we're going to put Chad Gable over on SmackDown. I'm going to bring up Judgment Day over to SmackDown as well. Dewdrop, we'll keep Edge on Raw. Finn Balor. We're going to bring Toxic Attraction from NXT over to SmackDown too. Luther's going to be on Raw. Johnny Gargano is going to be on SmackDown. Hannah and Caden Carter, I'm going to keep them on Raw. 
going after the tag titles there. My LA Knight, mm, I think LA Knight, uh, I'm gonna put on Raw, I see how he does. Miz will bring over to SmackDown, same with Riddle. I'm, bring, I'm breaking up the Street Profits, I'm gonna put Montez Ford on SmackDown. Seth, we're gonna bring on SmackDown too. I'll move Sheamus over. Tony Deville can be on SmackDown. We'll keep Shotzi on, actually we'll move Shotzi to Raw. Shinsuke will go to Raw. Hit Row is gonna be on SmackDown still. Champa will bring over to, actually we'll keep Champa on Raw. Trish will bring on SmackDown. And I think we'll do that just for now. Now we can edit our titles. And for the men's, we have the United States Championship and we'll put it on AJ Styles. The tag titles, we want new tag team titles here on SmackDown. I always like the 02 2010 look of these. We will put on Damian Priest and Finn Balor, and I'll clean up the tag divisions too. Women's side, we need a women's mid card champion. And I think what I'll do is I'll put it on Sonya Deville. Scott Steiner apparently is going to be Mr. Money in the Bank. I don't know why. And then we'll also put uh, women's champion Bianca Belair on both shows. Then we got to clean up all of the divisions too. So editing the divisions, we got we got all these people in here. So we got to clean up every single one we got. We'll probably still have to make some roster moves, roster tweaks. So we'll add Seth, Ray, Bobby. I'm going to put Montez Ford in the heavyweight division to see how he can do. That's good there. Your mid card, Austin Theory. Put Axiom in there. Chad Gable's a single star. Dom Dom. Riddle is... And Braun Breaker's coming up and Santos Escobar. So it's not overwhelmed with stars, right? The heavyweight title divisions are always tricky because there's not a lot to pick from. I mean, you can move around your rosters a lot more. We got Top Dalla in there. And that's it. So I got to tweak these tag divisions because you got no contenders. The women's mid card, the US title. We'll add in Dewdrop, Queen Zelina, Aaliyah, and Raquel. And those will be your mid card. You got JC Jane and Gigi are going on SmackDown for the tag titles. Women's heavyweight title, Bailey, Rhea Ripley, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, and Trish. That's not bad. We got four here. We got six there. We got no extra roster members. So that works out. Now for participants, I got to go take a look here because I need more tag teams. So we'll put Angel Garza on there too. You know what, I'll put the Creed Brothers on SmackDown too, that'll help a lot. And we got the LWO, we gotta add them too. So we'll fill up the tag division a bit more. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up Grayson Waller, but I'm gonna put him in a tag team with The Miz because I, want, I wanted to do that. So now the tag division on SmackDown is building out quite nicely. And then I'll make Miz and Grayson Waller a tag team. Okay, now we got Grayson Waller and The Miz in there too. And we're good with our divisions. Now on Raw, we gotta clean this thing up again. If we look at our titles once more, good heavyweight titles here. We'll edit our participants and fill it up some more. But Angelo Dawkins on Raw, Braun's on Raw, Brock is on Raw, Butch. We're gonna call up Cameron Grimes, bring him over to Raw. Charlotte's moving over to Raw. Cody. Dexter Loomis will be on Raw too. Drew is coming over to Raw, give him a big push. Edge is staying on Raw. Elias, Viking Raiders, Curium will stay on, will come over to Raw. Ada, Katana, Chance, and Kaden Carter will come over to Raw. Karrion Cross, we're moving him over to Raw. He needs a refresh. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will be on there, and The New Day will be on Raw. LA Knight, yeah, is going to go over to Monday Night Raw. Same with Lacey Evans, Liv Morgan, too. Maximum Male Models, they'll stay on Raw. Ricochet and Ridge, Boogs as well. We added Champa in and Xavier Woods. So let's see what we can do now with our divisions. We got Randy, Edge, Brock, Cody, Drew, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I don't know if I'm gonna have them tag or not. I'm gonna hold on to that for a second. Karrion Cross, I might actually move up into IC title. See if I can do that. Gunther for sure. LA Knight is IC title bound. Put Karrion Cross in the IC title for now. Same with Sheamus. You got Budge and Ridge, Kofi, you got New Day, you got Viking Raiders. You got a decent tag division there. I'll keep Imperium off of it because of the way it's slotted right now. And for right now, I'm going to put Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn up in the World Heavyweight title division since we don't have Roman running both shows. And looking at who else I have left available, I'm actually going to put Nakamura in the Heavyweight title division. So we got seven competitors. You got like 15 over here which is a lot 
but might have to trim it down or bring in like the European t Championship. On the women's contenders for the Intercontinental title, got a lot of tag teams, but we'll put in Lacey Evans, Liv, and I guess Natalia. Those will be in our IC title division. For tag, we got more tag teams. I created Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler as a tag team. And for the women's heavyweight title, I guess it's only Charlotte. So we'll have to fiddle around with this a little bit more uh, to see what we want to do. But because we got a lot of like women, we got the tag teams, the Intercontinental, US, the women's heavyweight title. We're going to fill out a bit more of our women's roster on Raw. We'll do a couple of more call-ups here. We'll go over to our divisions. So we'll Roxanne Perez, Dana Brooke. They'll go into the mid-card title. And we'll add Asuka. And Liv, I'll move up into the heavyweight women's. You got three on that side. So it's a little bit more balanced right now. So our divisions are done. The roster is set up. The titles are there. Before we're going to set anything else up, we need to go and edit the match tables, make sure they're working the way we want. So match tables, you can get really granular with how you want to do this, or we can just try to keep things a little bit simple for you. It's the match tables, if you're not familiar, you have regular, then the other tab is the one-on-one -on -one rivalries and your tag team rivalries and how often they are going to occur on your shows every single week. So if you always want a one-on-one -on -one match to happen on your show and you want it always to have like two of them, you will, and you always want your main event to be a singles match, it can be. And it could also always be for a championship, but you could also edit that too if you want. So we'll change it so that we're going to have like we're going to have five matches on each show. And so I'm going to have two being the uh, one on one matches. We can have at least two tag title, excuse me, two tag team matches. There is a chance of having triple threat fatal four ways. Uh, I don't want to do this one and I don't want to mix gender. We'll increase the chances of a triple threat. That's fine. So that's one, two, three. Then you know what? We'll add in a fatal five way because those are always fun. And there'll only be a chance of having that once. For your rivalries, play with this how you like. For me, I might just do a chance, like gonna be a one-on-one, -on -one, we know that. You can have unlimited, cause it's just based off how many rivalries you have, but you want your rivalry to be a main event, you can't. So you can just set this as unlimited. So you can play around with this too much too, but I don't think it matters too much. Uh, just these standard match types, this is where you wanna have some fun and change it around for yourself. I've also gone in and I've thrown in an eight man tag team match just to see if it'll do that. Uh, and then I'll also have my main event always be just like a one-on-one -on -one match on SmackDown. Now, because I've moved the shows and changed them around, all of my pay-per-views are now grayed out. So we have to go in, edit the pay-per-views, and make sure that we have our host show set up for every single pay-per-view. You can change the match card limit uh, up to 14 for your regular pay-per-views if you want. And don't forget, you can also change the match table for every single pay-per-view if you want to have a specific theme in there, like you're doing Extreme Rules and you want really Extreme Rules 1s or TLC, Hell in a Cell, uh, or even to get into Survivor Series. Because we have full rivalry slots, I'm going to make sure my cards are typically going to have 10 matches on each of my pay-per-view shows. All of our pay-per-views have been fixed. Now, I do like having brand splits. I do like having just independent shows. Here, I do have a crossover for what we have built out for this skeleton. Uh, the other thing you can add in is if you want to be able to do like uh, create your own arena and do like a midweek live event. So if you really want to fill this thing out, totally add in NXT. You could totally add in then on Wednesday, like a premium live event, not a, excuse me, not a like pay-per-view, but just do a live event show every single Wednesday. If you want to be able to add that and just add it in as a minor show and you'll be off and running. So if you have a specific arena that you want to use for this, go ahead. You could just do like main event and the show image itself you could just go in for arena images and locate wwe live and this could be hosted by raw and smackdown five matches and now you've got a mid card midweek show that you're doing it's a minor show so it doesn't impact anything else if you also wanted to get into like premium live events and doing true brand splits backlash is fine here but just check out the cycle because your rivalries are always going to be on a four week cycle and so it's kind of weird where it goes like one, then you're going one, two, and then you got another pay-per-view and then another one. So it throws them off a little bit. For the most part, they're fine. But if you wanted to have true brand splits, you might want to move Backlash up here and then move in another pay-per-view or week after week 
on the weekends, put in the other pay-per-view. So Backlash could be for SmackDown, and then you could do another Backlash or something else for Monday Night Raw's respective pay-per-view, and then that way you got true brand splits, which I really like. So you can see on the first show though, it looks like I got like, with 789, I got, I got a lot of matches here. That's because not all the changes happen until you fast forward past that event. If I forward over to Monday Night Raw, then it takes into effect that I only wanted five matches on my card every single week. And you can see it's a little bit better here. And the thing is with the latest update too, a lot of the tag teams, the managers, it's working. So you do have Bailey being a manager in here. We got a five-way match. We got our main event. And you can see we did just the live event on Wednesdays. And the roster changes it up a little bit. Ah, LA Knight's in a match against Goat there. He's going to get destroyed. Hopefully not. But we got some different matchups in here too. So you can see when I set up the match tables, I did put in an eight-person tag team match to happen 10% of the time. And we got a cool one here where you're getting damage control and Alexa Bliss versus Toxic Attraction, Becky Lynch, and Bianca Belair, which is kind of cool. Like Judgment Day is working. That's great. Now I'm still having a ton of matches, so I guess it didn't pick up what I edited for the match card, so I have to change that for next week. So you can see that we've got Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, which is really cool. But what I showed in another video on the channel, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, but I showed off how to get uh, the bloodline to work properly. And what I did was I set up in exhibition, like in the main menu, I changed it so that the bloodline is set to separate, not together. And I made that happen and it changed it over so that there wasn't gonna be an issue with the entrances. So like Roman has his Roman entrance. And if you still just do it that way and you have it separate, they come out together as the bloodline, which is great. So for this one, we will trigger our entrances for this. And we also have rival reactions. So you know your rival reactions here. You can manually do them and do it yourself. You could just add in an action for each of them and it gets contested to see who's gonna get which one. Or you can do free mode and I can make Roman do something very specific. These rivalries are not set up yet. I haven't put them in a rivalry. Uh, we can still do them but I don't have everything. So if I want like disrespect, we can do like a post-match disrespect. Now what's funny here is that the Usos and Paul Heyman were supposed to come out and they didn't. And I think it's because I set up a rival reaction to go along with it. So be mindful of that. So now Roman comes out with both belts, even though he only has like SmackDown on our brand. Uh, but just note that if you mess around with rival reactions, it could mess up some of the entrances. And obviously if you do different actions, it's like if there's a pre-match beatdown or something that usually changes it, or if you're gonna like have some superstar sub in for another one, or sometimes the AI does it on their own, which can be annoying. It happens a little bit less with the newest patch updates, um, but it does happen from time to time. Now I'm gonna see what the action's gonna be. So when we set up the rival reaction, we'll have Seth win, fades over, and we get a nice little cutscene here. Guys, both these superstars left it all in the ring. Yeah, it's a shame there had to be a winner and a loser. And, oh, oh, the disrespect on. of Roman Reigns to Seth Rollins. <laughs> oh, what are you man, doing, Roman? Are no, very Roman. High between both athletes. So the rivalry actions can set up some fun stories for you when you want to use them. And once we've got all of our superstars set up, our rosters are running, tested out a show for the week. We have Backlash right now, which sometimes I just, because the pay-per-view is so close, unless I manually change the pay-per-view dates, I don't have any rivalry set up. So what I will do once Backlash is over, I will come in here and I will set up all of my rivalries. And I like to change it up between the low, mediums and highs. If you have a high to very high, that is gonna trigger those like high end uh, rival reactions and your mediums and lows typically are bucketed elsewhere, like a separate thing. So you can have a medium low rivalry and it'll be okay. But we'll look at all of our champions. So like on Raw, we got Randy Orton, uh, we'll have Randy have a program with Cody. The intensity is also going to determine how long the rivalries are going to run for. And because we have some stuff that's cross-branded too, keep in mind of which rivalries you are actioning on each of your shows. So we set up some basic rivalries too, with all different levels for their intensity, how long they're going to be going on for. We got that on Raw. And then on our Thursday night SmackDown show again, we varied it up. And this will help contribute to some of your rival reactions that you have throughout each of them every single week. The other thing, again, go through and make sure you check out all the individual stats 
of superstars. If you do edit somebody in a rivalry, it can mess it up. But make sure you check out their allies, their enemies, as well as making sure what their crowd reaction is going to be. And if you're looking for certain stars to be getting into rivalries, uh, you can also go through and check out all of the different rankings for and the power rankings for your stars. So if we edit our shows and we go over to Raw, you can edit the power rankings and you can see who are the top contenders. But if we go into the individual divisions, and let's just say it's going to be the IC title division, we can edit the rankings here. So Gunther is up really, really high, but I don't really want to do that. I wanted to put LA Knight up there. So he's first because he's going to be in the rivalry. So even if you don't have them in rivalries, if you want to have those matchups to happen a little bit more often, doing it this way can really help. Hope this helps you set up some of the basics for universe mode. If you guys enjoy this video, just hit a like and a thumbs up on that video. It helps a lot. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.